Hi everyone, Jeff and Leslie coming at you from Colorado today, and we're going to be talking about some cool data warehouse concepts with JSON. Jeff, you want to talk about some things we're going to cover? Yeah, so if you're being cool, you should really understand what JSON is and how you can use it. Um, there's a record source field in your uh, data vault model that tracks your data lineage. So you could really leverage JSON um, to index it, to find uh, specific data that have come into your table. So we'll cover those concepts. Before we get started in JSON, I want to quickly go over data vault concepts. So data vault is a modeling technique that we recommend using in the data warehouse. Here are some ideas around data vault and I'm going to quickly go through these slides so we can get into the JSON example. Uh, most important thing about data vault is extremely agile in nature and you can really do incremental building with this so it's fantastic. In data vault we have hubs, satellites, and links. Those are our main tables. And for each table, we also have some hoodoo fields or audit fields that we want to use consistently. So your surrogate key, and you might not use, call it an SK, it might be a primary key, or it might be an ID, or it might be sequence. It's your preference, but stick with it, stay with the rule. LDTS is load date timestamp, LEDTS is load end date timestamp, and RS record source. So we're going to be focusing on this record source as we talk about JSON and ways to utilize and, and really extend record source field. Here's just a quick example of how Data Vault looks from more of an ERD perspective. And just a reminder, we are talking about a raw data warehouse here. So where you're going to be pulling in data and pushing it to, this is really important. This is at the high level concept. Okay, so what is JSON? JSON is JavaScript Object Notation for short. It's a basically text format. It's lightweight and used for data interchange. It's super easy to read and super easy to write. So it's often used in web browser to server data interchange, but there's many benefits for the data warehouse environment, especially with the support from SQL Server now um, and the functions that they've come out with. So let's just look at a, a quick example between XML versus JSON. So you can see JSON is incredibly easy to read. Um, XML with the greater and less than signs uh, really became, you know, it's readable and doable. Um, just JSON is a lot cleaner. Here's another example. And, and what we're really going to be talking about is using JSON for that record source field. Um, it's really easy to parse JSON with our server functions now, and so we can do a lot of data lineage, um, a lot of information we can stick in there to help us as developers and really technical documentation that we might need, or even for doing some auditing activities. So we really are extending information about a record field and lots of different ways we can report and put things in here. So really, Think about your environment, think about what you're doing, and really there's a lot you can do here. Now we're gonna kick it over to Jeff. He's gonna demo how to use uh, JSON within a data vault model. And so here we go. Hello. I'd like to walk through how to create a table with JSON in your cool data warehouse. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a hub table, call it hub service JSON. So we have um, identity column, just to load as our circuit key. Then we have our ensemble ID um, for our service code, which is going to be our JSON data. Then we're going to have a couple of computed columns. So we're going to create load date timestamp from the JSON, and then a record source, which is going to be the record source table where our staging data is at. Let me create this table. And looking at the table, we're going to see this is again where we're keeping our JSON. We're computing load date timestamp and record source. We have a set of staging tables in our ETL schema. We're going to go ahead and look at um, service source one that we can load data in from into our hub table. So we have service code. Then we have uh, what's called sysprint agent. 
which is really sales areas. There's some hierarchy involved. And then the thing we're actually going to sell with some existing JSON on where this data had come from prior to landing in our staging table. We'll come back to this in one second. Um, let, let us actually then load our hub service JSON code. So we're going to insert into, I do have this uh, shrink function. What it's going to do is replace the, the spaces and the carriage returns um, to save some space. It's not necessary. But when I like to write the JSON code, I like to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'll have some spacing in here just to make it easier to read. So we're going to actually um, take data from our staging table, um, calling it business friendly name. So BK is short for business key. So we'll spell out service code. Then we ask this print agent, which it's uh, commonly referred to, load date timestamp, record source. And then again, this is the table in our data warehouse where we're loading it from in the staging. And then we're going to add lineage. So that's that extra record source data that we have. Um, provided to us. When we look at it, um, at first we're like, well, I, I can't really read what's going on with this JSON data. So this is where I like to use Notepad++. So if we put it in here, we could go and format the JSON, and then we could um, show the JSON. What does it actually really look like? So our RS stage, so this is, think of it like a landing area. It could be a data lake. Um, in this case, it's Teradata, so throwing everything in there. Uh, this is the database that it's in, and this is the in-staging table that we have in Teradata where we're pulling that data from. The RS app, this is the app it had come from. So it's coming from uh, Oracle, uh, Vantage CSG. So this is uh, the database in the library that it's coming from and the actual source table name. So we get two stops of lineage uh, provided to us in our staging table. So when we come back to see what we've loaded, we've loaded nearly a million records into our hub table. Again, uh, adding some, uh, some JSON and that existing JSON we have from our staging table. So what, what does this look like? Come back again, we're gonna be querying um, from our table, let's just select 10 records. So we're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff in JSON that we had put in. A um, Little bit hard to see again. So back to Notepad++. Let's go ahead and paste it in here. Format it and then view it. So we're gonna get a bunch of good stuff. We have our business keys. So we're going to see service code, sysprint, and agent in here. We're going to have our load date timestamp, and then a record source. So again, um, in SQL Server, we're pulling from our ETL source um, and in the same database. But the lineage history came in, and so we're seeing it was staged again from Teradata and this end table coming from uh, the app source. So this is one thing I, I love with viewing JSON is that hierarchy to see where things are coming up, coming from for data lineage. So that's great. Um, next set of queries though, if you wanted to get data out of the JSON, you would do this JSON value. So you're going to the JSON column and then you're navigating to business key and I'm calling it sys and then print and then agent. And then in my where clause, I'm going to filter on service code, looking for a specific service code. If I include my actual execution plan and run it, I'm going to see I did a uh, index seek on that table. So we could do a trick. We're going to add another column to our table uh, that's derived from JSON. So we're going to our BK service code and adding that. And if we refresh our columns, we now see we have a BK service code. If we were to run a query, we would see, um, oh look, we have codes called out in the column. So we don't have to parse through JSON, that, that's nice. And then what we'll do is add an index 
on this new column, including the JSON data. Let's click and run that. And then if we requery, uh, the one difference will be instead of in the where class, we, we're deriving the JSON for the service code, we're actually going to call this new computed column that we have that we put an index on. And when we run this SQL, look at the actual execution plan, we now have an index seek versus an index scan that going over the million records. So I hope everybody found this useful. Um, I think working with JSON is pretty cool. And I continue to uh, do it in the future. Thank you. Want to thank everybody for joining us today on our tips and tricks. Uh, hope to see you next time. We'll be coming out with some more Data Vault uh, tips and tricks and ways to implement stuff in your data warehouse and beyond. So thanks for joining.